Welcome everybody and good morning. This is Saturday, February 22nd, uh, and this is the Viper Trading Webinar. We are here to show trade setups using the Viper tools. Today's, uh, today's topic this is actually part two of a two-part series, quickly spot trends and ranges and uh, know how to trade them. Part one was uh, last Thursday night. If you've not seen it, uh, it is on the web. Please, uh, if you have a chance this weekend, go uh, download that pup and take a look at it. It's on the webinar link here. And if you're a member, of course, you can just log in and it'll be one of the first uh, uh, webinars on the recordings. First, we get a knockout or standard disclaimer, then we can get on to some charts and look at trade setups, which, of course, is why everybody's here today. Uh, all communications and private trading systems are for educational purposes only. Futures trading does involve risk, and there is a risk of loss. Nothing contained in this webinar or the webinars, including the live trading room, are to be construed as investment or trading advice. And, of course, everybody in here does know that you do trade at your own sole discretion. Uh, okay, without further ado, let me get over to a chart. Uh, I know some of you are uh, visiting, and this might be the tail end of a, a, a free trial for you. Uh, if you have been visiting us, uh, we appreciate your time and interest in us and what we do here. And so welcome to you. Um, let me explain what everybody's looking at for, especially for the new folks. Uh, we trade intraday volatility and movement of futures markets. We are, uh, for the most part, flat at the end of every trading session. Uh, we very rarely, if ever, hold overnight positions due to overnight extreme volatility that could work adversely against us. And we mainly trade the following instruments. Of course, you're, if you've been in the live room, you know uh, Gary pretty heavily trades uh, crude oil. Uh, uh, ES is the E-mini S&P futures, this chart right here. Uh, of course, we trade gold in the live room as well. I'm going to show some charts of gold. Uh, we used to trade NASDAQ. We have a lot of traders who trade NASDAQ, but uh, we mainly use it now as kind of like a GPS guidepost in terms of market direction. It is normally the leader. Uh, and then uh, some folks trade the Russell, RTY, uh, and uh, we used to have that in the room as well. And then, of course, YM is in the room, the E-mini Dow futures. This is ES. Uh, we trade four range charts. These are uh, Each bar is uh, four ticks in size. No time-based charts here. Uh, and uh, the uh, we're connected to the data feed, Rhythmic, uh, which is providing the data that's coming in here. And if it was just raw data, you would just see bars going up and down. So we created these indicators, which are the background colors, bar colors, blue, yellow, and red. Uh, the meters are the various uh, four different uh, trends on the chart. Predictors, swing levels, uh, object trader, alerts, long alert, short alerts. We have, um, we have webinars dedicated to showing how all this works. I'm going to skip forward a little bit since this is part two uh, and sort of dive right into the meat of things here. The principle is very simple. I'm going to just do a quick overview recap so everybody gets on the same page, but I need you to hold for one second. I need to take care of one thing. Give me, where's that thing? Just pause one second. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. We've had this computer on all morning here. It's getting hot in this office. <laughs> Open up some windows and get some air in here. Sorry about that. My apologies, everybody. Um, so the principle is very simple. Um, you do have trends and you have range-bound activity. So a trend would be when a market is basically going up or down. Uh, range-bound equals sideways, basically. And let's look at some examples on the chart here. Here to the left, uh, on the ES chart, coming from here to here, you can see that you were in what we call an uptrend. Higher highs and higher lows. Background is primarily green. We do have these transitional 
colors here in between. But for the most part, you can see that the trend of the market was up. Now, in an uptrend, what you do and um, the telltale uh, characteristics of that are the first thing that occurs. And you've, I've shown this a thousand times, but I'll, I'll repeat it, uh, is a thrust in the up direction. And then we have what are called retracements. It is in the retracements or the pullbacks that we find our trade setups. Here's an example of a deep retracement going below the mid-band. And let me just define the various trades. So in an uptrend, you're looking to take trades in basically three different areas. One is called the mid-band area, defined as the bands above or below or right on the mid-band. It's called a mid-band trade. So if you hear that call in the room, it's uh, you might hear something like uh, the you know ES is sitting is sitting on the mid band box that in get ready to take you know whatever a long or a short trade that's what that means the bars are literally sitting in this area right here and in, in the case of an uptrend you would be taking long trades so you'd be getting long out of this area right here buying you'd be buying support uh, the other two areas I'm just going to show them. Um, because then I'm going to show uh, some other things that happen at the open of the market that are similar but a little bit different. Um, you have what's called this principle of deep retracements where markets can go uh, a little bit deeper into this area here. So you have the you have the mid band thick line in the middle. You have one, two, three, four bands below it. One, two, three, four bands above it. Total of eight. Band two and it has a, a line, a red line, a thin red line called line two. And in the case of deep retracements in an uptrend, the bars may turn red and go into this area here. Now, that's not a trend change. It's still an uptrend, so you're still buying support. By the way, a lot of you are just coming in. Don't worry. This is recorded. Uh, it will be posted after it renders today. Um, here's another example here. Oh, 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 and uh, uh, the other uh, retracement type trade in an uptrend would be what's called a minimum criteria type trade, and that would occur in this area right here, just under stealth and line six. So minimum criteria long entry, mid-band long entry, deep retracement long entry. Those are the three primary areas where we look to get in on pullbacks in a trend, okay? Here's another example here of a deep retracement. This is not a trend change. Sometimes people struggle with this, um, you know, because of the bar color change and how deep the pullback has gone. If you take these deep retracements and you put two lot on, the initial goal is to get back to the mid-band. So in this case here, it would be that would be your first, you would take a scalp trade there and then engage your runner with a trail, like such. Okay, here's an example of a mid-band trade here on the final push thrust up in this uptrending moved here. You can see you got up to a fresh high, and then you came and stopped out, like that, okay? Now, in this case here, you had a very precipitous sell-off. I mean, it's quite possible. This was overnight. Uh, let's see. No, this was a uh, – so let me explain what you're looking at here. So, yeah, we have the indicators. We have the bar colors, the background colors. We have the bands, power meters, et cetera. And then I have added, and you don't have to have put this on your chart, some people find it helpful, the current day open high low, OHL. Um, that is the dashes. So here is an example where from this day, uh, the futures markets close temporarily from 115 to 130, which is this area right here. This demarcation of this line here is the end of the close of this trading session. And this is the beginning of the next trading session right here. So what you can see happens is very quickly all of the open high low uh, 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 lines converge because this is the open. So the black dash line is the actual open itself of the uh, ES futures market right here. Okay, that's the opening value of it, 67 even. And then as the market continues to move, you can see that, uh, okay, so just, just to, so you can track these lines. So here's the open from the new session. Whenever you hit a swing high, it's marked with the blue dashed line. So this represents the high of the session. And then the white lines right here, the dashed white lines represent the lows. 
right in here like that. So you can see very, very quickly after this, the ES opened on this particular day in the afternoon, you got a quick spike up. That became the high of the session. And then you sell, uh, sold off very precipitously here like that. Now, could you have boxed this? Mm, maybe. Um, I, I don't know if you would have caught this short or not. It's hard to say. I did not trade this. Um, and then you got a little bit of a retracement, and you didn't check that bottom. So there really was nothing much down here. Now let's move on. Let me do a pop quiz here. I always like to sort of sprinkle little quizzes in to um, make sure everybody, first of all, is awake and paying attention. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to just sprinkle in some questions here. I'll start off with a very easy one. This is a yes, no question. Um, is this area right here with these yellow bars a long mid-band trade, yes or no? So just type, I'm going to fi five seconds on the, uh, on the clock for your response. Yes or no? Just a Y, boop, and no. Four seconds. Mid-band long, yes or no? Right here. What say you, team? Three seconds. Type in your response, please. Two seconds. Yes or no? These yellow bars, are they a mid-band long trade? Y for yes and for no. One second left on the clock for your response, please. Time's up. Yeah, the question wasn't whether there's a box here or not. The question is, is this a long mid-band trade, yes or no? And the correct answer is yes. Here we very clearly have a thrust. Can you see over here just a few minutes ago? And some of you might have come in late, and this might be new to some of you, so that's perfectly okay. Don't worry. It takes a little while to learn um, the system and the terminology and how all this works. So, you know, if you're, if you're struggling a little bit to see things, don't worry about it. It will... It will uh, a light bulb will go off at some point, and it'll start all clicking for you. Very similar to what happened here, not as pronounced, obviously. You can see that you got a thrust up like this, turning the background green, bars turn blue, and the mid-band and all the band bands begin to stair-step up. This is the beginning of an uptrend. And so since we are uh, what we call a retracement or pullback traders, we get a pullback very nicely into the mid-band area right here. Now when we say box it, we're referring to our um, object trader tool, which can use boxes and uh, rectangles and all manner of things and lines to get in trades. In which case, if you boxed it as I have shown, depending on when exactly you boxed it, you'd be filled long on the close of one of these bars right here or the close of this bar right here. And it fires a market order for how, however many contracts you have in. We recommend at least two so you can get a scalp off at six, eight, or ten ticks and then engage the runner with a trail stop. So the answer was yes. Now, here's an example here. Let me, let me, keep, let me advance the chart. So in this area here, you were said to be sideways to up. Now, you might hear that a lot in the room, too. Markets can go sideways for a while. So this might be an area right here, for instance, where when we say sideways to up, you're primarily looking for long trades until the trend reverses. Let me see if I can find a good example of a short uh, trade setup in a trend. Stand by one second, please. Yeah, let me show you a couple examples here. Here we go. Now, um, on the surface, you might say, well, you know, Charles, this sounds pretty simple to me. Why isn't everybody in here just making a million dollars every morning, and this looks to be a piece of cake, and we should be cleaning up every day and off to uh, flying off to Jamaica in our private jets? Well, the, the, what comes uh, to become a challenge is the fact that uh, markets don't always do exactly what you want them to do. Let me show you an example of a short mid-band trade entries right here. And there's actually two different ways to look at this. And let me explain how this starts to become a little bit more complicated. Here we have an example of the market going very deeply down, actually changing the background, underline two. 
Now, if you just look at this on its surface, let me go and let's uh, suspend disbelief and say we well, don't really know what's going to happen next. Could you make the case that it could be just a deep retracement on another move up and that actually you might want to buy this down here? Is this a deep retracement that you could buy? And the answer is yes. So what you have sometimes is when a bar, when a um, when all the bands in the mid band are going sideways like this, you have deep retracements or what are called phantom trades. You might hear that in the room too, that terminology. And so what you don't want to do, uh, let me explain what you don't want to do is you don't want to. You can obviously see that this is a thrust in the down direction. So at this point here, you mo might be inclined to want to short it. But that's the opposite of what you want to do. You don't want to short or buy thrusts. So you don't short this, and you don't buy and go long when markets do this. This is not the place to get in long. Because when you do, your stops will be down here, and you'll be stopping out exactly where you actually should be getting in. So that's one important takeaway from today. When you start looking at markets, say, tomorrow or Monday, and you're trading them, gold, oil, it really doesn't matter whatever you're trading. Just please keep in mind that we we almost never ever buy or sell thrust moves. So if you buy this deep retracement, what did we say earlier? Where are you trying to get to? On deep retracements, where do you want the market to come back to? What's your what's your first goal of where it should go? Four seconds. Just type in your answer. So you're buying down here. What's your initial goal? Where where do you want this trade to go? Three seconds. Getting long here. And where's your target? Two seconds. One second. Buying here. You're trying to go to where? Time's up. Mid bam. Good. You said 59 and 3 quarter and or mid band. You were correct. Your goal is to get back up to here. Okay. You want to get back to there. Now, keep in mind when these kinds of things happen, this could be one of two things. So when you take this type of trade, you have to keep in mind, you have to sort of keep an open mind when you do because it could be the beginning of a trend change. So how do we know? if we're going to change trends. Well, let's say when it gets back up here to the mid band and sits on there, we're going to be very interested in what it's going to do next because it's going to do one of two things. Well, it could chop around here for a while, obviously, but the other thing it could do out of the box here, let's see it's starting to move in your favor, right? It could break up and continue the uptrend, yes. Or conversely, when it comes up here, it could be a trend reversal, and you could break down and start heading down this way. Yeah, you never buy or sell a thrust. Yeah. When a market does a push in a given direction, whether it's up like this or down like this, you never buy or sell the thrust. You have to wait for retracement. Here, in fact, that's so important. I'm going to write it down. This is like, if, if there's any, it, like you know, sometimes it's hard people... I know come to webinars and you go in the live room and a lot of information real time coming at you. It's hard to retain some of it. I get it. But if there's anything you're going to retain from here, it's, it should be this. Never, ever, there has been a rare occasion where we've done it, but I'm gonna not going to mention, even confuse anybody with why we would do that. But um, let's not ever say never, ever. That's not a good way to put it. Um, Generally speaking, you should not buy or sell thrust moves. Instead, you got to patiently wait for the retracement. Oops, is that the retracement to enter the trade, right? And that is true of both up and down moves, right? Up moves, you'd be getting long, right? Down moves, you'd be getting short. But we don't buy or sell the thrusts.
That's one of the key elements. That's, that's a fund, fundamental underpinning of the whole methodology of how we trade is that statement right there. No, no, uh, well, uh, mm, that could be one way to view it. The other way to view it is that this could be, and this is what I'm saying, is that this is a transitional area, and some people get confused on phantom or deep retracements. And if you do, and I've said this before, I'm not disparaging the trade setup. I'm not saying don't trade it. You should put it into your repertoire of, of you know, your trading toolbox, if you will. But some people don't like these trades because a lot of times the market is transitioning into a different trend and they get bit. If that happens to you, then don't take this type of trade. But what I'm saying is that in, in that looking at it in that context, this would be just a deep retracement on perhaps another move up. And not to confuse things, we're not going to know until it gets here and we see what, the, what it does after here. We will know. Let's just go ahead and advance it. Okay, what's going on right here? What's going on right here? Right here. Well, you got your goal. Those of you who bought it here, you got to your mid band, so there's your target. But what do we say when we drew this box? What do we say when we drew this box? It could be a transition. It could very well be a continuation up at the time that this happens, right? At the time this is actually happening, but it could also be what? A transition to a down move. You don't know until it gets here. So there's many times where you could take this type of setup here and let it go either way. I know I see some people who are saying I don't like phantom trades and I rarely if I ever take them. I, I, I get it. I understand that. We get a lot of feedback like that. Some people don't like those type of trades. If you see them and you don't like them and you're not good at them, don't take them. You know, you still have plenty of other trade setups you can take. There's all sorts of mid-band trade setups and, and more shallow retracements in a trend. Yeah, it's just one of the three setup of the three primary setups that we have. So let's see what happens out of this mid-band box. Well, we see the resolution was down in this case. So what I'm saying is if you had went ahead and boxed this in using object trader or limit orders, you'd actually be filled short here. This is a case where this turned out, this deep retracement turned out to be a trend change. And the, and the trend now is down. You're taking short trades, right? From here, not from here. This is the thrust. Um, many times when, uh, Sandra, when the, when the, when the uh, and that's a good question. We get that question all the time. Um, I don't really bear a lot of significance in the bar color. In, unless um, um, you're in a tr in a very strong trend, you know, like over here, for instance, if you're in a very powerful uptrend, then uh, most of the bars will be blue. I tend to look at that, um, and you'll notice when the bars get around the midband, a lot of times they'll turn yellow. That's just the algorithm painting them. It doesn't, you know, it could mean sort of a neutral area in the midband. It's getting ready to go some direction. Here, for instance, you can see the direction was clearly down in this down move, so everything turns red. The bars are red, background's red, mid-band's red, stair-stepping down. So that I look at more of that. It is, as far as the, the yellow impacting my decision at the mid-band, not so much. Yeah, not so much. I, I know Gary looks, and a lot of traders look at the color of the mid-band. It, it's not something I really focus on, mainly because I'm looking more at the swing levels and where to take the trade. Yeah. Not so much the color of the mid-man. Okay, good. All right, any other questions on this? I need to get uh, moving here on to um, some important topics that I need to cover today in regards to um, trading the uh, open of the markets. Let's see, a couple other quick questions before we go on. What's the criterion for drawing the box up or down? Uh, in this case here, over here, uh, uh, Charles V. Stand by. Uh, several things. First of all, uh, you can see that the background color is this transitional color. So you have you have green, thick green, which is uptrend. You have dark, you have red, which is downtrend, and then you have transitional colors backgrounds where the market's going sideways. The mid band and all the bands are flat. Uh, 
and you come into kind of a neutral area. So you know you have you have a swing uh, on the um, in this range up here, right? You got a swing up here. You got support down here at the low of the day, of the low of the session, right down here. See it? And the mid band is sitting almost right, exactly in the middle and flat. So you came out of a downtrend push. You had an upper range where you had a mid band long trade. You pushed down, it did not quite get the low of the day, and you're sitting at the mid band right in the middle. So that's why I was saying at this point, you could pretty safely take a long or a short here in this transitional area right here. Okay? All right. Um, now, before I tr we, we trade the open, and I'm going to get into a little bit more, I don't want to say complicated, um, but I'm going to start to pull some of the correlations in to, that are going to help you make your trade decisions. And, you know, I realize that, you know, when you, when you correlate markets together and look to sync up their movement, inherently by doing that, you're going to make your trading a little bit more complicated in the fact that you're not just looking at one chart. You're considering what other markets around it are doing. But let me ask you this question before we go look at the open for Friday morning. I'm going to type this in. As a trader, I have to fill in, I have to fill in this blank. As a trader, each and every morning, it is my blank to do what? Why are you trading? Why do you get up every morning, go into the live room, load up all these charts, go to all these webinars, learn all this stuff, get ready to take trades, put capital, risk capital at, work, at, uh, at risk, whether it's your own or a uh, one-up trader or one of the uh, companies that back traders. What, fill in that blank, please, before we go look at the open for Friday. What is the answer to this question? When you, I'm talking about everybody here in the room and listening on this recording, get up and, and trade, put capital at risk, deal with all the learning and frustration it takes to get to that point is to do what? What are you doing it for? Fill in that blank, please. I'm going to give you 10 seconds. Actually, I need to step away for 10 seconds, literally 10 seconds. I'm going to count 10 seconds, and I will be right back. Fill in that blank, and I'll come back and check your answers. Be right back. Okay, I'm back. Let's see what you said. Let's see what everybody said here for filling in the blank. Uh, draw levels on the chart. Okay, that's important. That's definitely important. Make money. Tom, John, and Mario. Stephen says to be profitable. Good. Pass a combine and trade for a living. Michael, excellent. James, responsibility to look at yesterday and overnight trading history before taking trades. Good, James. Stephen just typed in goal. Hit your goal. Make money from Pradeep. Good. There, I like this one. David H., take as few trades as possible. 
Make as much money as you can and achieve your goal. That's a good one, David H. Right on the money there. Draw on your charts and make money. Profit, limit, losses, determine trend. Okay, good. All right. So so in, in, let's go ahead and fill in this blank. It is my goal as a trader to take as few trades as possible to achieve or pass, surpass my trading goal for the day, right? That is the answer to the question. Now, some of you said it in different ways. Um, you know, you might have phrased it a little bit different. Uh, let's finish. Uh, oops. Let me just finish this and then we'll move on. Surpass my Now, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna beat this up, okay? I, I think everybody gets it, but there is a few key parts of this statement that really need to resonate with everyone in here, okay? How many of you show of hands? Be honest. Be honest with your teammates here. Still over trade, and you know you over trade. Show of hands. You try to fight it every morning, but it's just it's like a it's like a bug to bite you. Just you, know, you, you see all these trade setups and all these charts, and you can't. It's like uh, you can't help yourself. You just want to pull that trigger. You want to make as money, much money as you can. You see this, you see that, you see that. You want to take this, you want to take that. You're just jumping all over the place. Show of hands. Me, 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 me. Over and over. I'm trying to get better. Lots of scalps, one or two pointers. I get stopped out, and then I get right back in. So I'm going to show you something here, okay, and this is really important. It is possible to take one or two trades right at or near the open of the markets and be done. And in, if, in essence, isn't that what this says? That's exactly what this says. So the important, the important words in here are as few trades as possible. This wording here, I'm going to put in parentheses, as few trades as possible, I want to be explicitly clear about what I'm talking about. I'm talking about one or two. I'm not saying take five or ten to hit your goal. That's not what that's saying. That's saying one or two to achieve or surpass your goal. The other thing that's important is these words, achieve or surpass my trading goal. Few trades as possible, get your goal. That's all you got to remember. Okay? Good. All right, let's move on. Now let's go look at the, I'm going to pause the screen. I'm going to get some charts set up for you here that are going to hopefully, I'm going to, I, I think the way I did this on uh, looking back on it um, Thursday evening um, was good, but I'm going to try to make it, um, how would you say, as straightforward and, and simple as I possibly can, okay? So that when you leave here, I don't want anybody saying, you know, and, and, and if, if you do, then I haven't done my job correctly in helping you to learn how to trade. But I want everybody to see this as crystal clear as possible so that come Monday there's no confusion about what in the heck was he talking about Saturday morning. I have no clue where to get in or what to do, okay? So I'm going to keep this as straightforward as possible. Now here's what I'm going to show you first. Here's Friday morning. Okay, this line, this vertical line here represents 6.30 a.m. Pacific time. So I'm here in California. All you, everybody knows that. And um, this is Pacific. So just relate it to your local time zone. If you're on the East Coast, that's 9.30. Midwest, of course, at uh, 8.30. Gary's charts are in Central Time because he's in Oklahoma, right? This line on the left corresponds to 6.30 market open, equity market open, and 6.30 on ES right here, right there, okay? Actually, it's a little bit over, it's like right here. Now, when you look at these two markets at the open, and I'm saying, when I refer to the open, I'm saying in this area right here, 
you can say that the markets were doing what? Here, I'll help you out. Let me get this thing, shuffle that over here just for a second. Let's put this over here. Let me, let me, let me draw something that I think might help you. Okay, I'm going to draw this to the left. It's going to look something like this. Okay, and I'm going to draw this on the right. It's going to look something like this. What would you say about the market at and around the open, which is the uh, uh, vertical lines right here? What were these markets doing? Sideways, range bound, right? They were range bound. They were sideways. They were a little bit choppy. But you can see over here to the left that after you got up and you just tested the top of that range, you started to do what on YM? What did it do? It paused at the mid band right here, and then it broke like this. Now let's look at what time that happened. 634, this level right here broke, and you got a strong, very precipitous down move at 634. Now let's go take a look at what, what was going on at 634 on ES. 634 is right here. So if we're looking at 6.34 on YM, and we're looking at 6.34 on ES. What can we anticipate that we think might want to happen from here? Is it going to be up or down? And I'm going to draw a support line right here. Let me make these bars a little bit smaller and put a support line in. See my big fat bars are kind of confusing and I'll put a support line in right here right here I'm gonna put two lines I'm gonna put a line right there and I'm gonna put a line right here now before you answer that I'm gonna show you one other piece to this puzzle okay it's like think about think about like putting a jigsaw puzzle together you got to have a you got to have a piece here and you got to have a corner piece there and you got to have a, a corner piece there and then you start the pieces all start fitting together, right? Well, if YM is doing this, heading down, and we know that gold has an inverse relationship with the equity markets when the markets are fully correlated, what should gold have been doing at that time? 630, 634. With an inverse relationship, right? There's an inverse or mirror relationship. Then what should gold have been doing at the open on Friday morning? If it's the inverse of what YM is doing, what direction should gold be doing? Any, any uh, guesses? Take a guess. Should be breaking up. Remember, remember we said it was an inverse relationship, right? All right, well, here's line. Let's take a look at the gold chart. Let's see what gold was doing. This line on gold represents 630. Here's 630. Here's 622. 622, we push up. We consolidate. There's 630 and change. 633. 634. What is gold doing at 634? right here let's put gold right next to YM just for the moment what is gold doing in relation to YM what is jumping out you out at you after the open on these two charts this is gold and I'll help you this is gold and this is YM Are the, are the correlations intact? Mirror image, correct. Here at 645, we actually break the low of the day on YM. 
just a very precipitous sell-off. And you can see very clearly that there were mid-band trades that set up here, mid-band short there, and they all worked out very nicely. Did you get a chance to jump in gold? Were there any chances to get long on gold? Were there any retracements after the thrust that could have gotten you in gold long? Yes or no? Just You don't even have to say where they're at. Just a simple yes or no. Were there retracements that meet our criteria for entry long on gold early after the open on Friday morning? Were there entries? Yes or no? Four seconds. Look at the chart. Based on our definition of trades, just a simple yes or no. Three seconds. Two seconds. Y or N? Were there long entries on gold? Or did it just shoot up and there's no, it never gave you a chance to get in? You just missed it. Just ran, boom, 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 50 ticks. I, I didn't get nothing. One second. Yes. Good. That's the correct answer. Here's the minimum criteria trade, almost a mid-band on gold right here. That meets our criteria to get in long. Yes. And here's another one right here. Two spots, right? How about on YM over here on this nice sell-off? Was this a short? Yes. Did we call it in the room? I believe we did. Do these retracements on YM correspond to the retracements on gold? Pretty close. All the way down, just like that. And all the way up, just like that. Now, let's, armed with this knowledge, let's turn our sights to ES. Because what I want to be clear here is, and I, I, want, to, I want to be real so there's no confusion or, or uh, sensibility about this. I want you to understand what I'm saying. I'm saying that you can trade YM or you can use it as a leading indicator like NASDAQ chart could be. You could take these uh, trades short. You could do them in SIM and watch them. You could put some micros on here. Likewise, on gold, you can take it with a, a real live account or a top step account. You could put a SIM trade on here if you want to just track how fast or far it's moving. And you could put micros on here. There's many ways to approach this. The bottom line is that if you want to trade ES, you're loaded for bear now. And what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What direction are you trading on ES, armed with this knowledge? Are you going to get long or short, five seconds, L or S? What are you doing on ES, armed with this knowledge of YM and gold? Four seconds, long or short? Two seconds. Are you getting long or short, ES? There shouldn't be any question in anybody's mind what you're doing. And if, and if there is, then I'm messing up. So just to be clear, before I even show the ES chart, you're going to trade ES in the direction that YM is going, and you're going to trade the opposite of what gold is doing. So just to, to reiterate what you're looking at then, YM is going down. So that's telling you that the equity markets are selling off at the open on Friday morning. Gold is going up. You're taking long trades on gold, which has an inverse or mirror relationship to the equities. ES, of course, is an equity. It's the biggest equity out there, the E-mini S&P futures. So based on that knowledge, what are you doing with ES? Even before you take the trade, you know what you're going to do, and it is what? Short. Please tell me everybody's going to say short. Nobody, based on what I'm showing, should ever say long as an answer to that question. Let's look at the chart. Okay, we're dinking around. Here it is, 630, 632, 633, 634. 634 on gold is here. This is what gold has already done at 634, okay?
What I'm trying to do here, and the reason I'm taking so much time to explain this, is that this is when we said before we even started looking at these charts, we said our goal was to try to trade as little as possible and to hit our trading goal. And what I'm about to show you is how you can do that in less than 15 minutes on one chart based on what you see here. Let me position this correctly. Give me one second, please. I don't know why these bars get so big when they do that. Take it down to one pixel. So we're four minutes into the trading session. That's what gold is doing. And we're four minutes into the trading session, and this is what YM is doing. Right here. So we're going to anticipate that we're going to short the living daylights out of this market if and when it breaks here and here. Here is the short entry, and here is the short entry, even before you take it. You know that you're going to short this, right? Because in this particular morning on Friday, all the correlations were intact. Could you box it here? Yes. Could you put limit orders here? Of course. Could you sell market when it broke? Yes. However you choose to enter this market, you are shorting it. You know ahead of time you're shorting it. All the directional signs are in place to take that short trade. Does everybody see that? Before it's ever even taken. Let me get these all set up here so you can watch. Now, before we go ahead and show the, the, the shorts on ES, is everybody clear about what we're doing? Is there any questions on how and why we're position our, our, positioning ourselves to take the ES trades? David, entry at 635 wouldn't be the best to exit with five points, just a fast move, and then re-enter a pullback to mid-band or hold at 635. Well, David, I'm going to go ahead and, and advance the chart to answer those questions, and then we will speak to um, directly to how you would have handled this trade. Because I took it, and I loaded for bear on it, um, because the correlations were intact. But um, I see what you're saying, and I'm going to speak to that right now. Are you ready? All right. Now I'm going to advance the ES chart at 633, 634, 635. Here we break down here. So short entry number one on ES was right here. at 634 and change, just just seconds after the other two had broken. If you had sell orders or a box in here, you were filled short on that bar right there. Okay? It plows right through here, too. So if you had a sell order here, you would have been filled at 55 or 54 uh, three-quarter. Two short entries, here and here. Okay? Now watch what it does. Those of you who entered here and or here, both got scalp trades off when it went all the way down to here. So just to be clear, from the upper one, you went from, let's use round numbers. Let's say you have filled a 56 and went all the way down here to 51. This is five handles. So that's 250 on a one lot, five bones on a two lot. If your trading goal for the day was $500 and you put a, a two lot on here and you got filled short here and you covered down here, you already hit $500 in like a minute and a half. And there was no heat. You felt no heat at all. It, it precipitously moved directly, very quickly, right in your favor, and you made five bones right out of the gate. How many of you would be done? Show of hands. $500 on one trade. Two lot. That's your goal. You're done. That's it. One. One trade and you are done. Me. That's me. Well, I just showed you how to do it. There it is right there. 400 your goal? Well, then you broke it by 100 bucks. I'm off golfing if I made 500 bucks in two minutes. Good for you, Tom. Now, was that the end of the move? Well, we can see to the left 
that there was a uh, very continued pronounced move down on YM. Let's see if I can get that. It's already at one tick. Over here. It just continued to precipitously drop and continued to break its lows of the day here. Okay? Now, ES, after breaking 51 by one tick, does a retracement here at 636. 636, 637. You get a pullback all the way up into here. And it kisses and rolls. And I remember this happening. And I told everybody to stay in that short. Remember? I said, stay in that short. Why would we say to stay in that short? Well, let's come over here and see what 638 was doing on, on 637, 638, and 639. At that time, what was YM doing when ES was pulling back a little bit? What, where was YM? YM was doing this, fully into a powerful second leg down at that time, right? Here's, here's, here it is right here. It's pulling back a little bit, 637, 638, 639, boom. What was gold doing? Well, gold had paused here and did another push up and checked that swing all the way to 644. There was hardly any pullback at all on gold. Gold was solid. 636, 637, 638 was that on gold, and it held the swing at line six. Based on this information here and this information here, if you were not in ES, could you have actually shorted this kiss and roll right here? where it checks resistance. Was this a third short entry here, yes or no? Right here. What do you say, you team? If you missed the first two entries, did you get another shot at it? That's 636. Yes, of course, that's exactly what that is. Three entry points short. Textbook. I mean, it came within a few ticks of the mid-man. If you'd entered up here and you were riding two lot, which I did, I already peeled some down here, and I still had, I, I can't, it was either two or three or four, I can't remember. I, I, was, I was trailing the rest, and I, and I it came up. But, you know, the thing that makes that, con what I'm trying to say is that you don't have to make this trading decision in a vacuum. You don't have, when, a lot of times I've noticed when traders, and I see it in the room a lot, they get nervous and they get scared. You know, maybe you're short here. And you didn't get filled to he till here, okay? Maybe you shorted here, but you weren't filled to here, to here. And it's checking where you got in, and you're nervous, and you want to dump it. Well, you don't. We're not making that decision in a vacuum, right? We know gold is solid, right? And we know YM is breaking like a dog. You can take this trade. You can hold this trade with some comfort level and try to relieve your anxiety that you're going to get stopped out and take a hit because you don't. Look what happens. It dinks around for a couple of minutes, and then it goes down and breaks its low of the day down here at 6.42. 6.45, YM broke its low of the day, and at 6.45, you broke the uh, high of the day on, on uh, gold. Gold breaks its high of the day. ES breaks its low of the day. Correlations are intact, right? I'm talking about this move right here equates to this leg down, this would have been the third leg down for YM, breaking its low right here, like that, which correlates to this leg down on ES right here, out of this box, or the other two entries. Now, where does eventually she wind up going? She goes all the way down here. Where does she eventually stop out? Down here. I think I got out at like 39.50 or something. I think I got out in that candle right there. So how much was the next leg of this short worth? Let's say you missed the first two entries, or you stopped out and re-entered. Let's use some round numbers. Let's just use round numbers to do this quickly, okay? Okay, you got filled up here. Okay, we're saying that you missed the first two entries. Whatever, you didn't see them, you didn't put them in, you waited on the retrace, you, you saw it was going to roll, you got in, I don't know, short at 54-ish. Let's use a round number, yeah, 54-ish. And you get out at 39-something. 
What's 54 minus 39? 15 handles. 15 handles. So this leg on ES was, yes, short plus 15 points, points a handle, right? 15 points. Or four times that is 60 ticks, right? Four per point. So on a one lot, so one lot, one contract is how much on 15 points? Help me fill in this number. If you had one contract short from 54 and you got out at 39, approximately less commission, would be how much? Right, 750. And if you had two contracts short from uh, 54 to 39, you made $1,500. Now that's not including this leg. I'm not even including in that. Let's say let's say you missed that one. You, know, you just didn't get it. Whatever. And you got in here short somewhere. You know, within a tick or two of 54. Okay. And you got out down here somewhere around 39 ish. Yeah, less commission. So you know you you would have made uh, 750, almost eight bones on a, on a one lot and 15 bones on a two. So if you're in a combine, if you're in one one up trader trying to qualify for a uh, trading account, which a lot of our traders do. Um, we have a lot of traders. I, I can't give you an exact number, but I can tell you it's a lot. Uh, so, you know, if you're in this combine trying to qualify for a trading account with 1UP Trader, and you're in the uh, 50K qualification beginner account right here, um, you'd be halfway to your goal on one trade on ES in one morning. Now they do have consistency rules and you have to trade 15 active days. So you add one active day, you need 14 more. Uh, but the point is you're halfway there. How long were you in this trade? Well, the second one, second leg down, you would have got in, uh, let's say, let's use a round number 637-ish. And you held it and you got out at 650, 13, 13 minutes. This trade lasted approximately 12 to 13 minutes, right here. 750 or 15 on two bones, two uh, lot. So if you were going for the 25,000 account on one up trader, and you traded a one lot here, you made the 750, you're halfway to funding on the uh, novice account. No heat, all moved in your favor. Correlations intact. Would you say that that is a uh, would be a perfect morning? I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. All everything was pointing in the right direction. The trades set up beautifully, perfectly. I took them. I took those trades. I was done. I was done before seven o'clock. I didn't take any other trades after that. I was done. I mean, I stayed in the room and continued to, you know, with Gary, watch and watch the charts and call other trades. There were other trades, but I didn't take any of them. So that is how you do it. Um, and that's how you use all your training and your correlations to get into and hold and take trades. Any final questions? I think that's a wrap. I'm going to need to get going here. Uh, it is 10 o'clock. Appreciate you sticking around. I hope you learned something. I'm going to stop the recorder now.